if, is there an offense even close to Michigan's offense uh, that was on Iowa's schedule this year? No. Well, I, not, I don't, not, not, not in hindsight. I mean, Purdue's offense through the air. Yeah, through the air. Really, oh, really, really prolific. Near elite yeah. through the but air. No, no, not buddy, nobody that pairs an elite running attack with an elite passing attack. I mean, Minnesota and Wisconsin, although Minnesota – I thought threw the ball pretty effectively against Wisconsin, which was a shock on, on Saturday. But besides that, I, I would say you're, you're right. Purdue would probably be the best passing attack and certainly Minnesota and Wisconsin on the ground. When I think of Iowa, Michigan, and, and I think I was going to play it much better than this, much closer than this. But the first vision that comes into my head, Corey, is anticipating what I anticipated when Iowa went to Wisconsin and I got exactly what I was expecting. And it was pretty ugly. I don't know how I was going to score in this game. I I agree that's with okay. you, Mark. I, what do you mean that's okay? Just, that's okay. Score. Because, because I see these comments in the – This is why – Defense. Okay, they, this is why – they, they don't have the okay. line. They don't have the explosive play. I just don't see how they're going to score. Okay, but this is exactly what you're, what the Michigan fans around this channel are saying. Malachi comments, I just don't see how Iowa can win this game. This is literally exactly what Kirk wants the narrative to be. I understand that. From I understand that it comes down to X's and O's. You go out there and you have to I, execute I, it. 2017. So you can be motivated as much as you want, but it has to be executed. And I think Iowa's a tremendous team. I think they are one of the 15 best teams in the country, but I think Michigan's one of the three or four best teams in the country. Let's just remember 2017, the offense was Bad. I mean, it's been bad every year, Mark. There's, there's never a year where this offense is good. Now you could say it's worse now than than normal. They've had no. a, they've had a good. I mean, they've had no. great offensive lines and a good no, run no. game in the past. Okay, that's just false. Okay, that that's absolutely <laughs> false. They've had good individual offensive linemen, but anybody that follows Iowa football knows they cumulatively do not have elite offensive lines. The 2016 team that won the Joe Moore Award. That offensive line was not Joe Moore award. I mean, th there's so many things that go into these awards. I, it, we you obviously know. I'm about pessimist. to hear about yeah. double nickels in 2017. I, I was going to bring up the fact we brought up 2016. Nobody expects you get blown out by Penn State. Nobody expects you to do anything against Michigan. They win. 2017, right? The Ohio State win. Nobody saw that coming, right? Nobody would have predicted it. Nobody thought Iowa had the horses. They find a way. So... And I saw the real Hayden says Kirk's been doing this for 23 years. He ain't changing now. I'm not saying that they need to change, just, you know, create a reinvention of this entire team. Like, I think the offense needs to be reinvented in the offseason. That won't happen, but I think it needs to be. But I, uh, going back to the defensive point, I'm just talking about tweaking, right? Because this defense, Phil Parker knows that he's one of the best, most underrated coordinators in the country. Um, I just think tweaking this defense, and he's done that before. Again, those games that we just brought up. So, you know, I, I, you, I, I'm fine with people saying I don't see how Iowa wins this game. That, again, I, I, that I'm wasn't not my statement. My statement you is more if score. Michigan brings a similar game to the table as Iowa, meaning if Michigan brings their A game and Iowa brings their A game or Michigan brings their C and Iowa brings their C, I can see a script that plays out where Iowa gets a couple picks. I don't stretching it past two would be something because Cade McNamara doesn't give it up through the air, uh, but, you know, creates a couple turnovers plus a special teams play. And it's the, it's a 20 to 17 kind of game. Yeah. I can Let's see exactly. that. Yeah. That, and you're right. So no, and I'm not predicting I was going to score a ton of points. Believe me. And I, I think I, I think I led with that. They're not going to blow Michigan out of the water. It's going to be a high scoring affair. Um, and again, I, I established that I'm not going to be shocked if Michigan runs through Iowa and wins by 10. I'll, I'll be shocked if they win by much more than that or surprise, I should say. Um, I just think again, g given the hangover effect from Michigan, given Kirk Ferentz's history, um, everybody's counting them out. The line is pretty ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, I agree with that. I, I mean, getting to double digits, I thought was like, I was I was in a I think I said wow I literally said wow um, I expected it to be seven and a half or eight or something like that but I mean I think that I I'm not listen I I I think I let off with that I'm not overly confident and there's definitely cause for concern with Michigan in this game this isn't like I don't expect them to roll but then you know 
when when me and Mark are talking about, you know, hey, how is how is Iowa going to score? That's where I like start to think about, you know, strength on strength, strength on weakness. And you watch what Aiden Hutchinson did to a projected first round pick ne- last week uh, at, at Ohio State's left tackle. And I just expect him to do very similar things. And so I think this court, you know, your quarterback situation could be in a lot of trouble on Saturday. And so that's where I see, I, I don't know. I think I'm pretty confident in that happening. I just don't know the other side of it where what will Michigan's offense be able to do against Iowa's defense? Yeah, the thing I, I'll say about the point spread real quick, Corey, and then I'll let you go. Uh, maybe Vegas is connecting the dots. The dots being that Ohio State murdered tons of teams in the Big Ten before they even got to Purdue and Michigan State. They were just obliterating, like putting up beyond what the final score was, 45 points in the first half against Indiana and Rutgers and obliterating. Those aren't good football teams, but Ohio State was doing to them what nobody else was doing to them. And so then once they hit Purdue and they were a 21-point favorite, considering Purdue's coming off wins against Iowa and Michigan State, I was included in saying, what is Vegas doing? 21 points? Ohio State blows that line away. Then they hit Michigan State. They're a 19-point favorite against Michigan State. A top five. They, they crushed them. It's 49 to nothing at half. And then look what Michigan does to Ohio State. Well, here's a couple things. Michigan State, they're talk about ter- bad units. Their defense is terrible. It's been terrible all year. So we all had Michigan State over overrated, right, Mark? You're going to yeah. say no because you're going to say you yeah, had it right where they, They're a good team, though. Their defense is terrible. They're, they're a top 15 team in the country. And, and by the from, way, no. I, from my perspective, I mean, it makes me sick that Michigan lost to them because they should have been 12 and out. How'd, yeah, Michigan, they, how'd Michigan lose to them, Mark? How'd Michigan lose to them? Why didn't Michigan, Michigan's run? Why, why wasn't Michigan able to just control the game on the ground and do whatever they wanted offensively? I mean, it was, it was a fairly high scoring game, right? It was I don't a final know score that Michigan that State's rush to 37-33. Michigan yeah, State's so, rush defense is pretty damn good. Yes. Their secondary then, is awful. It's awful, but it's statistically – again, this is where statistics can play a little bit, where they've got the worst pass defense in the country statistically. Michigan State does. But Miami's throwing the ball 59 times against them. Indiana, 52 times. Again, yards per play, yards per pass, they were only 35th in the country a week ago. That's well, not bad. Like I said, I'm not trying to spew a bunch of X's and O's. I've said very clearly that I think I, I, I think I was going to win this game. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I'm confident that Iowa will. I, right now, I'm confident they'll win this game, which nobody else is, right, Mark? You can call me a fool. We'll talk after Saturday night. But I'm confident they win this game. I could be wrong. I'm admitting I could be wrong. I'm not going to put myself on an island and, and say, shoot me if I'm wrong. Um. But again, there is a blueprint to beat Michigan, and that's what Michigan State did. Now, Michigan State is built totally different than Iowa. I get that. So we want to talk X's and O's. I I mentioned being willing to stack the box more than Iowa normally does, right? Second thing on offense, you've got to – I kind of downplayed opening things up. They're going to have to open things up a little bit. I'm like, Michigan State, their exotics caused Michigan some issues in that game. Did they not? As I recall. It it really – I mean, what it came down to was Kenneth Walker just making shit happen, essentially. Sure. It, in that, it, out of nowhere. So but there were if some I was, trick plays, correct? Yeah, there were a couple of trick plays. Yep, for sure. So I mean, I think you have to. That that's going to be a, a factor. That and I, and I again, we haven't seen it much, but we've seen Kirk do it in the past. So let's not lose our marbles and say Kirk's never willing to throw a trick play. Or I mean, I think again. 2017 18 there were a ton of trick plays that iowa ran especially on special teams you may have to do that on saturday um th- those are the only two x's and o's i'm gonna throw out there the rest is just a, a feeling about this game mark michigan state doesn't win that game if peyton thorne doesn't throw a pass on fourth and five i think that yep. aaron Rodgers seems like the only person on earth that could throw that ball like it was it was the most perfect and just sliding right underneath it after they after Michigan put him back to 
fourth and nine, I think it was, and they hadn't moved the ball in three possessions. It was it was every single thing aligned for Michigan State to win that game at the end of it. So 